On this week's show, how to find a good HMO manager. In the news, a rogue landlord faces a fine of £430,000, otherwise he's in prison. And we're going to be answering all your property-related questions. Welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an upload. You can catch us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Enjoy this week's show and don't forget to share it with all your friends. Hi, I'm Russell Leeds. I'm Alistair Cunningham. And welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. Um, I haven't actually, literally, this is the, I haven't seen Alistair for two about, weeks. Yeah, about two, two weeks. Two weeks. I kind of so. miss you. I know. And That's uh, why it's good that we're sat opposite each other. So we can look lovingly <laughs> into each other's eyes through the whole show, which is brilliant. Yeah. But yeah, literally, you've walked in and within yeah. a minute, we're in here. We're filming. Yeah. So tell me about tell me about your your. You've been in India. Yeah. So I've um I've been in India for two, uh ten well seven days eight days uh for a trading program um yeah so we, we are educating ourselves so when we say that we educate we're constantly educating we'll go wherever in the world um you've mm-hmm. been to America you've been to India as well you were there at this program last was it, week was it a cheap program last year no it wasn't um. I would say by the time you pay for all the flights, the hotel, you're probably talking 20, 25,000 um, for five days of training. So that's five grand a day. Five grand a day, that's, yeah. That's, that's not, it's not bad. It's, it's, not, bad. it's not bad. but um, Plus you've got two days either side to explore India. No, not me. Um, I didn't. I had the day before. I arrived at um, like one o'clock the day before the program started. Registration started at seven o'clock at night. And then they had a little bit of a, a welcome. So those um, two days, either side, seven days, two days just flying. Just flying, yeah, two days other side flying and then coming home. So, and as soon as the program finished, literally the program finished at like one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Uh, I was on a plane at 6.30, the, 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 like five and a half hours later. So I just didn't have time to stay because I had to be back here for stuff. But, uh, Alistair, um, man of the people, economy, flight? No. I thought you were a man of the people. You're Scottish. No, I did fly business because um, I had a, a busy schedule, so I didn't want to be tired. So I made sure that I. Um, I tell you what, I did do though. Um, on the on the plane, obviously business class, you've got a big, you've got to lay down bed so you, you can actually sleep. Um, I took I took a couple of um, sleeping pills because I wanted to sleep. Um, so. I, it said only take one, so I took two because I'm like a big guy. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Just take two in it and see what happens. Um, and I took two pills. I remember taking off and I remember landing. That's it. I don't remember anything else. You slept the whole way. Just slept through. the whole way home. Um, and I felt amazing when we woke up. So I'm, I'm now addicted to, to uh, sleeping pills, but no, I'm not really. No, it's just it was good. Um, but the training program's phenomenal. Uh, really good. Really like amazing. I would say. Outside of property, it's the best by a mile uh, personal development speaking training I've ever done. Amazing. By a mile. Amazing. A mile. Right. So, people, although they're very interested in this, they're yep. here to learn about property. So yes. Let's get cracking on. Okay. Um, how to find a good HMO manager? What a great question because one of the things that actually often gets overlooked when a lot of people talk about HMOs is is the, the after. Yes. So a lot of the a lot of the talk, it's all the before. It's how you get how you find the deal. Yeah. How you get it ready. But but at the end of the day, if you don't find a good HMO manager and you don't rent it out, it's pointless. It's <laughs> well, it's, it's worse than pointless. It's it's it, it becomes a liability as opposed to an asset. <laughs> sure. <clears throat> so I mean, what would you say was your best, the best way? A couple of tips then, and we'll we'll, we'll delve into it. But a couple of tips. The, of, just to, before we go into the tips, yeah. I will say this is the most common problem I see with people doing HMOs. They cannot find a HMO manager or one that can actually do the job um, because acquiring the property is one, one step. Mm. Managing the property is a completely whole ball game. Um, and it's a specialist field, I think. I think it is. It's it's not, a, you know from owning a letting agents. Of, and we specialize in HMOs. But specialize it's, in HMOs it's a specialist right? field that I, I thought would progress more than it has. Yeah. So obviously you've got a lot of, um, a lot of commercial... High street letting agents. No, they're no use. They don't do it, do they? They, they don't understand, or they, they can't. They, most letting agents on the street will not touch HMOs. Mm. You, you do need to go find a specialist. Um, but you, that but, will do but it. I'm surprised that no one's come up and gone. Right, I'm going to dominate the market here, yeah. and I'm going to be the go-to HMO. HMO. I think it's because they're so hard to manage. I think so because if you think about it, you've got let's just say five bedrooms. You've got five different tenants. Five different AST contracts, five different personalities, five different skill sets. You've got five different habits. 
Mm. You've got all these people with different habits, different skill sets, and they clash, mate. I'm telling you, there's more problems in HMOs and in, in obviously single lets. Um, and the biggest problem is um, unruly tenants, um, because if you're in room two and you've got a noisy, noisy no bed above you, um, it's just pro- causes problems. The, and the, the the thing they have to all get on. Do you know they what do mean? have to get on. The thing that um, I think is probably the most important a part of the manager yeah. is finding the right tenants. Yes, and making sure they're matched. It's very reason. easy to put yeah. dickheads in, yeah, and then it's it just cut one bad tenant, and what happens is the bad tenant doesn't leave. So let me tell you something. Um, my one of my HMOs in Wolverhampton, uh, I had a problem with one tenant. Um, he was smoking weed in his bedroom and out, out the window, and the house was starting to smell of weed and all that sort of stuff. And he was like, he didn't. He, he's a student, university student. He was addicted to sleeping pills. Base, yeah. Basically, he um, smoking weed out his bedroom window. Very rarely went out the house apart from to uni, and then he was partying all the time and lots of loud music. Now that caused problems with the other tenants because they were all complaining, yeah. and they were like, and I'm like, and the, the whole house is students, by the way, so in Wolverhampton, um, and it was just causing problems with all of them. And what was happening was this one tenant, his name was Elliot. He was he just didn't give a shit about anyone else. He, his his whole mannerism was, well, I'll do what I want. I paid to, I paid to rent here. Um, and as a result, I lost two tenants. I lost two other students that they moved out. So mm. I've kicked him out. I, I've got rid of so him. So now you've lost three. So, now I've lost so because three, of him, because, because of, of him, making a tenants. bad decision. To put, did yeah. you put him in or manage no, him? No, um, my management company put him in. But they, he passed credit referencing. Um, he passed everything. And he's always paid his rent. He just, his attitude stinks. Yeah, he's yeah. got this attitude of, Screw you! I don't give a shit about anyone else. Apart it's from hard. Me. It's hard to judge um, that. Isn't it? And I lost two really good tenants because of it, um, because it took us took us a couple of months to get them out. Because he was like, "Well, I'm paying my rent," and and I'm like, "Yeah." And I actually said to the HMO manager, "Just get them out. I want them out. Put better tenants in there." Now all my all my HMOs are filled anyway at the minute. They're all fully tented. Yeah. Um, but it, it's it's crucial. One bad apple can ruin the whole the, the whole atmosphere. The whole sort of. Um, yeah, the atmosphere what of the kind bedroom. Of, what of kind, the house. I mean, obviously, you, what sort of complaints do you normally find between the the tenants? What sort of because it's normally noisy, stuff. noisy, messy, yeah, smelly, yeah, like sting. People have got really bad, like. What about people that living aren't your flatmates? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't have any. Um, yeah, basically noisy, um, like bad cleaning habits. Yeah, messy, leaving kitchen filthy not cleaning up after themselves uh, leaving the bathroom in a not very nice just not not very nice manner yeah. it's just things like that that's that's the main things um i had another one with people <laughs> this is funny i had a, a guy one my hm1 hole um there's it's there's three uh four sorry there's four um they all work at the same fact they all work at the same place they come over from poland to work for the work in this uh, they work at the harbor and they come they're on a, a two-year contract so they're, they're living in my hmo and one of the complaints were that um, the guy in bedroom number three is noisy when his partner comes round, um, and they, they've uh, honestly he's noisy or she's noisy. I just said there's a lot of noise coming uh, from the room, and they some some the I think it was probably a joke. Um, I don't know, but I, I got a, a letter from an, an email from my HMO manager saying we've had a complaint about noise from the bedroom whenever he has his partner stay round. So it's like, yeah. Good on him. <laughs> That's what I'm like, but anyway. So, how do you find a HMO manager? A good one. Um, I was going to say as well. The, the, the other thing: Do you ever get this? And then we'll move on to that space. They're like, oh, he's taking up too much of the cupboard space, or he's yeah. eating my food. I've oh, not had that. I've not had that. I've had the complaint about the space where people store all their shit in the communal areas. Yeah, it's normally like something push like push bikes. He used my ketchup. Oh, I'm fuck. like. Come on, how old are you people? It's like to take them with school children, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. He's, he drug my Rabina. He had my Rabina out of the fridge. Just, just I've like, obviously oh. never lived in a HMO, but what I have done is, is been in serviced offices. Yes. And it is the, it is the same. Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, they, had our, they drank our yeah. coffee. <laughs> they used their milk. Oh, they left their dishes in the sink. <laughs> I saw one the other day. This wasn't me. It was uh, somebody I know on the part of the academy. He had a, a complaint where there's a woman has got some plastic bowls in the kitchen and people just use them for whatever. And yeah. she's complained saying uh, that people keep using my bowls. It's not on. These bowls are like, they, I paid for them. I, co- I bought them. Um, and she put a sticker on it right all the around it saying, this bowl belongs to me. Do not use it. 
Um, and the, the, the landlord has now bought some communal bowls for everyone to use, but it's just, it's so petty. Well, do you remember at right. uh, Hilton Hall? Yeah. Obviously, there was the communal offices there, and there was one microwave for the, op- there's about four offices yeah. and one microwave, and one of the offices bought their own microwave, oh, okay. but then they put a big thing on like, um, Steve Bull events only. Yeah. No one else can use this microwave. Did you ever use it? Always. Always. If they have a microwave, <laughs> always. But I'd stand at the door because I could see down the corridor, and, and so I would stand at the door. Because and if they'd come out, I'd run over and take my stuff out, and then and then. Really? Yeah. What would would they kick off if you were using it? They did. Yeah. Oh, how pathetic. That yeah. is so pathetic. How sad is your life that you have to? <laughs> that, that's that's the biggest sort of drama in your oh, no. life. Anyway, right. How do we find a good HMO manager? <clears throat> well. The first thing that you do is you phone, for me, yeah. uh, is, is if I, so let's say I've got, but I'll bought a HMO, I'm going to phone round a lot of the different HMO managers in the area yeah. and assess what they're like to, with me to deal with on the phone. Yeah. Because so I think you've jumped the gun already. Have I jumped the gun? Yeah. I think before you even buy a HMO, you need to be finding a HMO manager. Okay, sure. I think the first thing you need to do when you're looking at a HMO is find a good, H- make sure that that area has got a good HMO manager. Because if there's no good right. yeah, yeah, managers, right. I wouldn't buy one in that area. No, no, no. Um, so I think find the, H- f- at least speak to a HMO manager first, get them to sort of approve the area, the condition, not the condition, but the area and the the, the, the street, for instance. Sure, when you're doing your research, yeah, make part sure part of your due diligence, yeah, 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 100%. Um, but but you, you, you're you right, yeah, so you do, you do it. But when, when you ring them up, I'm yeah. like, I'm. How fast do they answer the phone? Yes, yeah. How sure. how are they to deal with over yeah, how the phone? Polite are they? How mm. knowledgeable are they? Mm-hmm. So I'll ask them questions about the area, some of which I'll already know. Yeah. Like I remember ringing up and it's like, um, is Article Four? And they're like, Article Four. What's Article Four? Yeah. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, it's like this is this. Uh, okay. Actually, you know what? Don't worry about it. Yeah. Uh, see yeah. you later. See you later. Um, my, having said that, though, sometimes it's it's like a PA service to answer the phones. It's just it's just being aware and 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 then, and then go and meet them as well. Yes. Go and meet them. It's, it's a good idea if you can get them to show you examples of the HMOs that, that they manage. Yeah. Ask them things like room occupancy rate, what their room occupancy, how how fast they expect to fill it. Mm. And what you'll probably find is is that they do tend to tell you close to the truth. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Because what they don't... A good one will, anyway, yeah. Yeah, well, I find most of them do, because especially if it's, like, in a bad area, for example, they don't want to tell you, oh, no, because they don't want to manage a crap property. Yeah. So as long as your, your HMO is good, they tend to tell you, you know, reasonably realistic yeah. um, guidelines. One thing I've found is it's really important. You need to get a very clear understanding of how much they're going to charge you up front. And now, I know so many people, when they speak to a HMO manager, they're like, yeah, how much are you going to charge us? And they say, like, 10%. All right, so they'll go with them, but then they'll completely discount the HMO manager that charges 15%, even though they're probably a better HMO manager. Mm. I would rather pay more of a percentage to my HMO manager and know that it's getting done look, looked after properly than pay than go cheap. So don't don't shop on price at this point, um, because at the end of the day, 10% of no income is nothing, yeah. but 15% of a full occupant's property mm. is is what a lot of people forget to work out with, which is where the HMOs managers make their money is the uh, the finder's fee. Finder's fee, because yes. you, you kind of you work out the ten percent, so you go okay. Because um, the how long would you say your average tenant lasts? Um, between one term and two terms. So like, because when I say term, I'm referring to an AST contract, six, six months. months. Six months, generally one AST to two ASTs. But some people leave early, don't they? Yeah, and they just leave. And it's like, I would say your average for uh, for us, uh, uh, this is across like I don't know. It's mainly in the Midlands, to be fair. So it might be different in the rest of the country, but probably over about thirty different yeah. HMOs, and it's like it's somewhere between six and twelve months, yeah. seven months, eight months. But to, I'd say closer towards six. Yeah, a year. I'm thinking that was that was, yeah. that was pretty good. So they're not staying in very long. When you consider you've got maybe like five rooms, that mm-hmm. means that you're having to pay a finder's fee every month. Typically, okay, so my HMO manager in Hull's, uh, Hull, they charge me £250 for a finder's fee. That's um, what we used to charge. But them. I say to them, look, I don't mind paying that, but if the tenant moves out within the term, I'm not paying another finder's fee. And we've agreed a discounted finder's fee if they move out within, if they break their AST. Um, which they're happy with. So, but yeah, be well, very, it's good that you've very clear. That. It's because I'm a negotiator. I'm a businessman. Yeah. Um, be very clear on your fees up front and what you've got to pay. Um, now, a couple of tips. Some letting agents charge for viewings. Yeah, they do. They yeah. charge for you to go and do, um, to do a viewing, which I can understand because they have to put the work in. It is their time, but 
I don't understand why any why people expect people to do stuff for free. I've never been that sort of person. Like, have you ever expected any business person who's working to work for free? Uh, do you know what? I would go as far to say as I don't want anyone to do something for working for free. Exactly, because they don't do it properly. I, 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 they don't take it seriously. Yeah. Or they think I owe them a favour. Yes. I'd rather just pay the going right. Yeah. I don't. I don't want yeah. people. To, I don't want. I don't want my. I don't want the HMO manager to be thinking. He's a freeloader. <sighs> Every time Russell Leeds gets me to do it, because uh, uh, they're yeah. not going to do as good job for me. No, I would not. rather give them a tip yeah. and pay them more yeah. and be their favourite customer. Because yeah. the thing is, when you're a HMO manager, and this is something else to bet. This is actually a really. I'm glad you mentioned this. A really good point. As a HMO manager, I've got like, I don't know, ten properties yeah to fill and someone rings me asking for a room yeah in an area who's who are you going to go to yeah I, 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 don't, I will choose there might be like if there's a guy that I like and who's who will pay the fees who will pay the fees and not quibble and, and give me a tip yeah. uh, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it there you are, yeah. so you want your you want, a, you want a good relationship with your HMO manager yeah, you don't want to be knocking them down you don't want to be treating them like crap you don't want to be ringing them up giving them a hard time yeah S- landlords <laughs> Honestly, a lot of them are absolute dickheads. Dickheads, and they? They, they they want everything for nothing, and they want to charge maximum rents. Yeah, it's just they're not looking at it as a. I think I think some old school landlords don't look at it as a business. I think they look at it as a bit of a side hustle. Like they, they work their job and they've got a couple of HMOs in the background. It's just they're tight. Um, it's they're the, just yeah. tight, and they want to they want to get every little tiny yeah. bit out of it. And I want to get this. And it's like, dude, it's a business here. Yeah, you want to build a business relationship. relationship. And it, I want no hassle because I have no hassle from my properties. I don't like. I I was actually thinking the other day. I've not even spoke to my HMO manager for like two months in Hull. See, and you're the sort of landlord that I love. The ones that just leave you to it. Yeah, and just, I, I don't. How's it going? Yeah. Oh, brilliant! Thanks for doing a great job. Yeah. It's like. No. You know, I get an email once a month with a statement of, yeah. of what, and I get now and again if something goes wrong, but um, they, they, they say, oh, can we can we get this done? And I've never, so whenever the HMO managers come to me and said like, we need to get this fixed, I'm like, just sort it out. Just don't, I don't yeah. care, just do it. I don't care, just get it sorted. The worst, is, the worst went when you go to them and they fight you. Well, let me go and have a look at it. Okay, we need well to go around. Oh, well, I'll go down next week. Okay, right. well, I'm gonna, that means I'm gonna have to deal with your Windy moaning tenants, tenants yeah. for a week yeah. because you're going to go down. It comes to the same conclusion that we came to yeah. and it's just postponed I, it. And I think it's because um, a lot of people think they're getting ripped off by somebody. They've got this natural thing that they think somebody's trying to pull the wool over their eyes. So they think like a HMO manager's try, like, saying the boiler's broke or the, the shower's broke, <sighs> but Hating. then they're, they're putting like 50% of the costs on top. So they're like, oh, I'll get a plumber. It's like, come on, man, just it's a business. Look at it from a business point of view. So let's get back to the topic. Heating there? Yeah. The amount of landlords that want to control the heating. Yeah, just put a little. I mean, we, had a, uh, we had a landlord. She was old <coughs> lady. Nightmare. Yeah. Right. So they bought. Hey, she didn't provide them with a washing machine oh, really? or anything in okay. the house. Right. And she said, like, just wash it by hand. Wash it by hand, what, in the 60s? <laughs> yeah. They bought one yeah. and she tried to find them. She was like, to us, find them. It's going to use more electricity. Okay. I was like, Come I on, won't man. name it. Get real. Jane. What's that name? Jane, it's a washing machine. I worked it out on Google. I was like, Jane, look, it costs, it's going to cost like £3 a month or something yeah. if they use, you know, average washing machine. Get a grip. It doesn't matter. Then she put this like lock over the thermostat. The thermostat, yeah. So interfering landlords. I, I will stop you with a lock over the thermostat. I will, I agree with that. Really? Yeah, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. I listen. I've never had a complaint about my heating systems or my hot water because we just we just control when it comes on and when it comes off. Because if you let the tenants have free reign of it, mm. they, they have it on all the time. So you go in the middle of summer, the heating's on all day, and every radiator's open full, and the windows are open. So my and it was on recommendation from my HMO what? manager. To so be, what they do be, is to be fair, right? To be fair, if you've got the heating on a, a nice temperature, but mate, I but oh no, mate, I, yeah, I agree with you. She used to have it on like seventeen or something. No, but so, but, but still, don't you think that like if you live in a if you if, you, if, you, if I go to a hotel even yeah yeah I want to be able to control the room temperature yeah. So my um my all my my heating comes on morning like from five o'clock in the morning till like ten then from four o'clock till nine o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, and then the water's on. Can they turn it down? They can turn the radiators down in the room, yeah, and they can turn the radiators up. Um, but it's all recommendation from HMO managers, because my, my, like, over uh, last winter, right, and one of my HMOs I last winter. I haven't done that for any of mine, just leave them to it. 
It's their, it's their home. Mm, yeah, sports spot. Yeah, it's, it's their, it's their, and, and, and realistically, I mean, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see what you guys think. You know, you ever paid the energy bills? Do you know much to? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. So uh, my energy bills <laughs> in my HMO uh, in Wolverhampton, Scotsman. In my Wolverhampton HMO last year, from the quarter over Christmas, the energy. How much do you think it was? So the gas, electric. How much do you think it was over three months? Uh, Nine hundred quid, three hundred pound a month. That's a lot. It's not that much. It is a lot. It is. Anyway. Right. Okay. okay. So in peak winter. Yeah. 360 or something like a month. Like. So what's that? 300 pound a month? Well, it was about 350, 360. You're upping it now. No, it's yeah, pretty it tells me 400 I'll bring the bill in and show you. I remember thinking, and even my HMO manager, I, I said to it's them, is lot, that normal? It's not like... And they said, yeah, kind of, you need to control the temperature. Um, How much is it now? It, it's it's gone right down. Um, so, I, I don't know, to be honest. I don't monitor it. Um, but I just remember getting the bill and thinking, flipping it, that was expensive. But it is what it is. Um, so, tips for finding a good HMO manager. Where do they start? Okay, so, first of all, you need to be good when you go, when you, and you just yes. deal with them, treat them with respect. Yep, treat, they, they are your best friend. Yep. Yeah. They're your bus- they're, they're partner at the end of the day. They're working together with your business. So, yep. yeah, treat them. So, I would say, I'd say call round first of all, mm-hmm. arrange meet, most of them will meet you <coughs> if you yeah. want to meet them and they'll go through and you can show them and t- and, and, and go, on, I go on my gut. Yeah, yeah, gut instinct, yeah, yeah, 100%. I go on 100%. Actually, I was reading something that I didn't know, I don't know whether you know. How many brains do we have? Two. Where? <laughs> well, some some women would say. <laughs> <laughs> some women would say three. <laughs> but how many, how many brains do we have? Uh, I don't know, mate, I don't know, you tell me. What, what, was I right with two? No. Nah, okay. What, what, what do you think? Left, left, left right. brain, right brain, yeah. <coughs> yeah, just including that as one brain. Okay. We've got two much smaller brains, as well as our Hold main. On. Is that just men or is that men and women? <coughs> <coughs> yeah, one in each, no. So we have, we have, you have your one in your head, yeah. you've got one in your heart, Okay. and you've got one in your gut. Oh, really? Yeah. Amazing. So when they say gut instinct, yeah. that's actually it's is actually valid. it actually is valid. You've got there is that natural uh, apparently so apparently yeah. so three brains. Right. Okay. So first steps to finding HMO manager. Have a good relationship with them. Yeah. Did you, do you want to go back to someone? Sorry. No, man. I mean, you should cut me off and carry. Sorry, on. I thought you'd finish. Go on. No, no, two brains. Shoe is on. Shoe's on the other foot now. Three, it? three brains. Yeah. Come on, come on. Three brains. But so what I'm saying is, is you, you, your gut instinct. You should li- probably listen to it more. More. Yeah. You yeah. talk while I die. <laughs> okay, you, you you die, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's Russell's insightful news today. Um, no, I, I, seriously though, no, I believe if you. you like them and you get a good rapport with them, yeah, and you trust them and you think they're good, that's a really good start. Yeah, but I'd ring around, find how knowledgeable they are. So where can they get the numbers for these people? Because like I know you can just Google HMO managers, but where's a good place? Okay, so I'd go on Spare Room. Spare Room, yeah, yeah, yeah. So go on Spare Room, have a look for some good ads. Yeah. So, Define a good ad. Define a good ad. Okay. Seriously, because the amount of adverts in spare room are absolutely shocking. I know. Like the photographs. Like if your HMO <sighs> manager's taking a photograph with her phone and their phone's an old Nokia 6110 and it's complete dark and like, why would you use them? So you want nice, bright, airy photographs. Like, I don't understand why more people don't do it. We used to do a video tour of the house. Yeah. Right. So it was like, uh, and Ellie used to win it. Do you remember Ellie? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do you, you don't, do you? No. <laughs> Ellie, that worked, worked for us. Quick no. move. No? Okay, so um, she she was sort of one of our main agents. So she'd okay. do the video. She'd go along outside the house, videographer. I think she did it. We'd just take two, but on a phone though. Yeah, okay. Because phones are pretty good, yeah? Yeah, if you so, use them right. <laughs> oh, I'm here outside, well, whatever street. Yeah. Let me show you around, show what it's like. Right, first of all, this here is the communal area, and you'd go to go around the, the house vehicle. and show them one of the bedrooms. Yeah, yeah. Here's a bedroom. This is the kind of bedroom that you get. This is the house, blah, 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 bathroom. This is, a, I don't know, I can't remember what she yeah. said, but. And, and, but it's like it takes five minutes mm-hmm. but it makes your ad stand out yeah from the rest so first place to go go on to spare room mm. open rent uk find landlords are renting properties out and they've got good adverts up like adverts with nice bright airy photographs it's written well written well it's described well they're also easily you, contactable also some of them you can tell if they've paid yes for the ad because that's a good sign yeah because it means they're prepared to to pay and best, your yeah. house will get bumped up. Um, so that's the first thing. Find find a good HMO manager that's that's currently doing it, and they've got more than one property. They're not just it's not just your property. Yeah, some of them will just be um, landlords. Yeah, obviously don't ring them. But if you if you can tell if it's an agent and you look on, there's a couple of them with the agent. Yeah. Also look for the agents that have got like rooms that have been filled. Yeah, as yeah. well you can kind of tell. and then ring them up. Get to know them. Go off your gut. 
how quickly do they answer the phone? If, if it takes you forever to get hold of them, your tenants will have the same problem. Mm. Uh, you don't want your tenants not being able to get hold of anybody. Um, and and then you're just, ringing up as if you're an inquiry. Yeah. So you're seeing how they deal. And how they answer the phone. How they answer is the it, phone. Is it like, yeah. How fast or do they make a viewing? Like, are they nice when they answer the phone? Yeah, are they treating you well on the phone? All that sort of stuff. I um, mean, I would never... Um, I actually have rung up, made a viewing, cancelled the viewing. Yeah. Um, before and it's interesting to see how they deal with all that sort of side yeah. of it as well I'd never waste their time and take them to a viewing when I wasn't no. going to show it but just over the phone um, and next thing go and see them uh, arrange to meet them and potentially arrange for them to come and see your HMO um, get them to come view it and get give and take their advice if they say I think you should do this i.e. I think you should uh, change the carpets or I think you should change this or change that then just do it because they tend to know what they're talking about um, and, and leave them to it yeah. If you're going to give them the power to put your tenants in there, don't be micromanaging. Just leave them to it. Give them the responsibility. Say, look, there's the keys. Crack I, on. I and f- let them let them go with it. Let them run, run with it. I watched it. a film the other week, uh, Ford vs. Ferrari, Le Mans. Have you seen it? You'd like it, actually. Oh, it's on Netflix. No, it's on cinema. Is it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, Matt Damon and... I will watch that. Who's the other one? Two famous actors. Matt Damon. Come to me. Do you know... You'll find out. Yeah, two famous uh, yeah. Christian Bale. Okay, Matt Damon and Christian and Christian Bale. Really good film. Anyway, what was interesting was Ford wanted to build this supercar to challenge Ferrari. Yeah, do you know the story? I know the story. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Henry Ford and all the top executives gave these absolute experts. They want you go and build a car, yeah. but they kept interfering uh-huh. and they kept trying to do that and they kept ruining it because that from the top, not knowing what they're doing. And that's what landlords do. Yeah, it is. Yeah. They're at the top. They, they're, oh, and they come in, they interfere. Just let, if you get a good expert, yeah. let, <laughs> let them, them do their job. Don't be coming in. Yeah. Oh, let. Oh, how about like this? Oh, I mean, we should just do what you do. One thing I think is really important is, yes, leave them to it. But you need to have regular correspondence with of them. Of course. Even if it's maybe not even even if not weekly, maybe once a month or every every six to eight weeks. Just hey, how's things going? Any problems? Um so don't completely ignore them mm. but let them manage. Um drop them an email or a phone call every couple of months. So I, I keep in touch with all my HMO managers just via WhatsApp. Hey, how's it going? And they'll message me on WhatsApp saying, Yeah, we need to get a pl- electrician in to do this. No problem, do it. Um And thank them. And and thank them, yeah. And like I don't I, when, I never when I never say room. to them so one of the recent things I had was my boiler broke uh, in Wolverhampton, one of my Wilberhampton properties. Stop the hot water stopped working, and the um, Phil rung me up and said, "Look, the boiler stopped working. Uh, we can get a plumber out today to look at it." And I'm like, "Yeah, just just do it." And he says, "Do you want me to get you an exact price of how much it's going to cost?" And I said, "Look, go ahead, get get a plumber out. If he says it's uneconomical to repair it and it's cheaper to do a new boiler, we'll just do a new boiler." Turned out, and I, I didn't I didn't say, "Look." Like, only do it if it's X. I didn't say none of that. I said, look, just go ahead, use your head. If it's going to be econom- more economical to put a boiler in, I'll just do that. Um, and I'll let them to it. The bill was like 300 quid or whatever. Um, mm. Now we've got hot water. Um, and there's, I didn't hassle them. And I didn't ever, I, I never quibble over money with them. No. Just just do it, sort it out, stick it on the statement. The, the, the only time that I would, because obviously we're assuming that you've got a good one. So obviously you do need to be on top of them a bit, especially the early days if they're bad. But you just do it in a nice way. So I would—that's why I always say to them, "How long do you think it'll take to rent it out?" Mm-hmm. Um, and then you—and then I'd email them. I'd get that yeah. in writing, and then you can not—it's not a commitment, but just like how long do you reckon yeah. it'll take to get? And then you can go back to them and you can go, oh, "I'm not being funny, but you know, you told me that you were going to get this filled in three weeks." We're three weeks in now. How well, about any news? What's going on? What uh, activity? Can I taking? give you an example? On. Because one of my HMO managers um, don't be a, don't be afraid to sack them. No, because I I I had to I had to get rid of a HMO manager because the one of my properties was finished and they told me they'd have it fully tented within two to three weeks. And we were six weeks down. They haven't had one tenant, and they'd done very few viewings. And I'm like, well, what are you actually doing to promote my rooms? Um, and in the end, I was I was just getting really frustrated with them. And I said, you know what? It ain't working. You're not doing what you said you were going to do. I'm not going to use you anymore. And I just ditched them off. So do not be afraid to ditch them off. Or um, the other thing you could do is get two agents on it at the same time. Yeah. But yeah, I would say go with your gut. Make sure you meet them. Be straight with them, but be nice to them. Yeah. Don't be tight and try and knock them down every which way. Don't micromanage. Treat them with respect. Don't micromanage them. And... But don't be afraid to sack them and replace them. Mm. 
Uh, either and, and then once you once you get a good one keep buying that area and just keep them happy and, keep and going look after them, them. Of, sh- of course so on that bombshell it's now time for this Okay, so talking about um, good HMO managers, this guy is obviously a bit of a genius because he managed to fill these rooms. <laughs> so, <laughs> but what's so good about him is he got <clears throat> 15 tenants in. Like 15 he got in, in a three-bedroom house. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> like how on earth? You know, when he did the viewing? Yeah. yeah. I'd be like going to him, dude, I want to hire you as my HMO manager. Now, obviously, you have to not break the law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but that's, where you, that's where there was a bit of a great area with not breaking the law. <laughs> of course. But he's obviously got some sort of skill. Um, Gurdip Kaur blatantly flouted the law. Is it a woman? I think it might be, yeah. Uh, and for that, she must pay a hefty sum. Let this be a warning that we will take robust enforcement action to stamp out illegal activity. Yeah, but look how much money she made. It's completely illegal, mind. I'm not condoning it yeah, at so all. Basically, so basically what but she did, landlord, is it in London? I'm assuming it's in Hayes, uh, near Heathrow Airport. Yeah, so she got a three-bed house and just somehow managed to get 15 people in it. Yeah. Uh, pocketed more than £400,000. <laughs> Over what period is that? Oh, uh, it doesn't say. It doesn't say. She crammed people... In all to all the rooms and some of the outbuildings in the garden, she was caught out in May 2017 after a joint investigation by the Home Office Immigration Team. The council's planning. Do you enforcement. know? I think we. This is that case we talked about about six months ago, and it's finally gone to court. Ah, I remember we've we've talked about this, a similar thing before. Um, basically, she's been told she's got. To, she has three months to repay. Four hundred and thirty thousand pound, or face five years in prison, as well as still then having to pay back the money. Um, wow. And she got numerous warnings. Well, she um, could probably sell the house, couldn't she? I mean, I imagine if it's near Heathrow, it's going to be... I mean, that, yeah. Up and running HMO, 15 tenants, that'll get good money, <laughs> won't it? <laughs> but Save it through better source. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, the, the, the thing is, again, like we, we're always talking about unscrupulous unscru- uh, landlords, dodgy landlords. She's obviously one of them. Uh, she's flouting the law, uh, breaking the law. But, but can you imagine being a tenant living there? 15 people, like... How many bathrooms are going to be in that house? Oh my goodness. Probably one. Oh, we're laughing at it. It's not funny, actually. It's not funny, it? it's no. Not funny. 15 tenants in a three bedroom house. At most, probably two bathrooms. Imagine the queue in the morning, like to get to the toilet for, before you get to work. Like, just, it'd be crazy. Yeah, it's so, crazy. But it does say here, now, yeah, it's not, it's not funny. <coughs> it's not a funny story, really. But it does say here that, uh, hold on, let me just find it. Okay, she was caught in May 2017 after a joint investigation by the Home yeah. Office Immigration Team and Council's Planning Enforcement. Um, so she's obviously exploiting um, immigrants. She's obviously exploit, exploiting mm. people that have come here to work. And they've got um, no choice. That is and they've got the no choice. That's just that's actually really bad. Um, so we, we do sort of chuckle a little bit, like the 15 people in that one house, but <laughs> they're living there because they've probably got no other option and she's just taking advantage of them, yeah. uh, which is pretty sad and it's pretty horrific. So like, good on the Council for coming down on her hard because... Te- Landos like that give this industry a bad name. Um, so the fact that she's been caught and she's been now brought to justice, yeah, good job. Uh, good job. Awesome. Awesome. There you go. Uh, right, it's now time for this. Okay, it's now time for the questions. Now, if, you, if you're not aware, we always do a Facebook Live prior to filming, uh, give you guys the opportunity to answer question, uh, ask questions. Um, you can also email us questions and stick them on our Instagram or LinkedIn, anything like that. So get your questions to us, we'll do our best to answer them every single week. So first question is from Dan Reeves. What are the general rules of thumb to follow when looking for a perfect buy, refurbish, refinance property? So general rules of thumb. General rule of thumb, find a property that is massively below market value because it's horrible. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> get a quote yep. on how much it is to do it up and then make sure that the end value is a lot higher yeah. than, than, than those two figures added together. I'll, I'll give you the, the, yeah, that's summed up perfectly. But another one is purchase price plus acquisition costs and refurb. Should so purchase price so plus refurb yeah plus refurb and all the costs to buy it solicitors all the bridging costs should be equal to or less than eighty percent of the done up value if you want to pull all your money out simple 
It's really simple. What you're looking for is the worst, the smelliest, the most rundown, drug-infested, needle-ridden, animal feces, gas-fired, horrible, talk, talk horrible that. carpet. Is your apartment That's, for sale? <laughs> That's what you want. <laughs> the worst place that you can find that nobody else is going to touch because they're the best places um, and it's got good good done up value you're going to buy it do the money do the refurb refinance it lend it out get some money out really easy if you're not on the academy or if you're not part of the training that we do get yourself along to the infinite returns program that we, we run three day program infinite returns all about buy refurbish refinance phenomenal event we run one last month and there's so many people have gone on to get great deals and they're in the process now of buying them so, so great opportunities there okay next question uh, this is from um, Matty White. Yep, Matty White. How to get a no money down deal as a teenager? Um, the same way that you'd get a no money down deal as, as an a, as a as a non non teenager, teenager. as yeah. an adult. Um, makes no difference. It makes no difference in your age. Um, listen, Matty White. What I will say to you, I'm assuming you're obviously your teenager. Uh, you need to focus on getting educated. Because no money down deals are hard, right? They're not easy, but you need to have the right education behind you. So if you've not done it, get yourself along to the crash course. We do talk about no money down stuff like that. Now, although, although it depends a little bit on, um, I, sp I suppose it depends on if you're 13. Yeah. It's, it's a bit different. So it depends. But if you're 18, 19, yeah. then... Um, but like get yourself along to uh, training and things like that. And also, you listen... But I would say best way, easiest way of no, a no money down deal is either deal sourcing, which yeah. you teach on the deal selling masterclass, yeah. or rent to rent. Yeah, like the thing with no money down deals, look, you can you can have it easy or you can have it hard, right? If you want an easy life, you're going to need money. If you want a slightly harder life, you're going to you, you have to be prepared to work. Okay, so no money down deals, you're going to have to do the legwork for somebody else because the reason they are using you is because they don't want to do the work. So you're going to have to do the work. You're going to have to do the the finding the deals, the the the, the doing all the the running around and legwork. Okay, it's, that's that's really the only way. Um, right. Okay. Next question is uh, from Joe Nicole. Russell, this is for you. Now let me just put, let me just set the context to this. I've just read it last night on the winners webinar. The question was I got from an academy member uh, in the Apprentice who would win the Apprentice out of you, Samuel and Russell, and I'm like, yeah, me, obviously. And um, it, uh, yeah, so I said, yeah, me, obviously, but obviously it depends on all the tasks, things like that. So you've got to big yourself up. Now, um, as I said. We all have our different strengths and different weaknesses, but we all complement each other. Um, so, Russell, Joe Nicole says, Alistair said 100% he would smash you out of the water on The Apprentice. <laughs> Is this true? Would you win? Or he's, he was pretty confident. Ha <laughs> ha Who would win? Well, on The Apprentice? Yeah, if me, you and Simon were in there. <sighs> Who would win? Because as I said to... I, I, I broke it all down in the... It was part of the conversation we were having last night. Uh, like we've all, me, you, Simon, we've all got our strengths and weaknesses and we all complement and play, play with each other. So it's just... I would, I would win. Like, I think that's a challenge. I'm just, try, I'm just trying to work out who would win out of me and Samuel. Obviously, you'd go in the first round. Dickhead. <laughs> right, okay. HMO related. If you have a two-bed studio and a seven-bed HMO, what would you give the vendor as a fixed price... And would you pay for literally everything, insurance, etc.? I'm assuming this is for rent to rent. Rooms would be 100% rent, £75 per room. Rooms will never be 100% rent, Joe. If you think that, you are you need to come along and let me speak to you because you will never have 100% occupancy unless... I don't think that's what he means. I just think he meant rooms will 100% rent at £75 per ah, room. Ah, right, okay, right, and fine. And £100 per studio. Could work £90 per studio, £65 per room to be safe. House is pretty nice. And look, that's such a, a question that how long is a piece of, script, a piece of string? Um, you want it for as cheap as you can get it, but he wants it. He wants to rent it out for you as much as he can get it. So without actually looking at the deal, knowing the area, going through all that sort of stuff, it'd be very difficult is, for is, us is to he answer. Is talking about on a rent to rent basis? Yeah, it's a rent to rent basis. You, you want to be making a hundred pound. You want to be safely making a hundred pound per room per month on rent to rent. Yeah, minimum. I wouldn't even entertain it for less than that. So a question I got. Uh, so for a seven bed, seven bed HMO. I'll be looking, okay, am I gonna make 800 quid yeah. out of this? If you are, and you think you get, then, then you've got a bit of cushion there for it to go wrong. That'll be my. Yeah. Um, could yeah. work out 90 per studio and 65 per room. Seven, so uh, hold on, hold on. So 90 per studio, how many studios? Two bed studios, so 90 pound, and then 65 times seven. So let's have a look. 
Uh, 65 times 7 is 455 plus 90. It makes 545 a month, a week times 433. So it makes 2,359 pounds per month. Let's take away 800. So you need to be paying him. That will leave 1,559. You're going to need money for bills. Costs. So I would, I would, you wouldn't, you don't want to be paying him much more than a thousand pound. Hmm. I would be saying 800, 900 pound a month. Work you'd out be paying your him. costs and you, yeah. you, know, you know what you I got. would be saying eight to 900 pound, maybe a thousand pound maximum. You'd be paying him. Don't pay him any more than that. Otherwise, you're not going to make any money. Um, I had um, somebody ask me a question. They emailed, um, I can't remember where it was, but I got asked a question yesterday. Um, and, and it was to do with service accommodation. They, they messaged me saying, um, occupancy rate in the area is 70%. It rents out at 80 pound a room. So 21 nights, because that's 70% of the month times 80 is 1,680. Now they wanted to know if this was a good deal or not. They're, they're, they're giving the landlord 1,500 pound a month. Yeah, it sucks. Um, now, it, so take away 1,500, so they, they make 180 and that's not even factoring in council tax, any of the costs. So it's, it's, it's all about education. It's a brilliant deal. For the landlord. <laughs> Yeah, not for him. So, uh, yeah, yeah, amazing. Brilliant. Well, guys, thanks ever so much for tuning in. We will be back next week, Saturday at 7 p.m. Yep. Where, uh, I don't know what we're talking about next week. I do. I know you do. Yeah. We'll find out. We'll find out next week. You have to join us and see. See you next week, guys. See you guys. <laughs>